In this video, we'll discuss geometric transformations in space. Now, we already have a pretty good grasp on a few transformations in the plane, and that includes reflection, projection, rotation, and translation. And now it's time to move out into our three-dimensional world. And our discussion will cover the same four transformations, and for the ones that are linear, and that's reflection, projection, and rotation, we'll discuss eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now I have quite a few props to assist us in our discussion, but you will still have to use your geometric imagination quite a bit. And that's a very good thing, because geometric imagination is a very valuable skill to have. So let's start with reflection. In the three-dimensional space, there are two forms of reflection. You can reflect with respect to a plane, and that's the more familiar form of reflection, because it reminds us of mirrors. And you can also reflect with respect to a straight line. So let's start with, with, res with reflection with respect to a plane first, and let's use the blackboard as our plane of reflection. But of course it can be any plane, as long as it passes through the origin, just like in the two-dimensional case, we could reflect with respect to any straight line, as long as that straight line passed through the origin. Now, I drew the origin here, so let me now define what the reflection transformation does. So for any vector, what you're invited to do is once again draw a straight line that's perpendicular to the plane of, re of reflection and continue it beyond the plane the same distance as we travel to the plane. And at the end of that distance is the image of this vector. So that's the definition of this transformation. And of course it goes both ways from either side of the plane to the other. So this transformation is of course linear by the same sort of reasoning as we used in two dimensions. So what are its eigenvalues and eigenvectors? So I don't think it's too difficult to see, but maybe it'll be even easier to see if I use the mirror. And with the mirror, you can get a very good idea of what the transformation does. So let the pen represent the vector, and its reflection is its image. That's where the terminology of image comes from. And of course, it's very easy to see all of the eigenvalues and all of the eigenvectors. So for any vector in the reflection plane, its image is itself. Now, it doesn't quite appear that way here. You see two identical pens right next to each other. They're not identical, they're reflections of each other. And of course you see them as separate because this pen has a finite thickness. But if it was infinitely thin and it would be right on that plane, its reflection would also be right on that plane and it would be itself. And that goes for any vector in the plane of reflection. Okay, so those of course represent eigenvectors with corresponding eigenvalue 1. And here's the other one. And you can see how its image is parallel to itself. It points in the opposite direction, but along the same line. So the image is a multiple of the original vector, and that multiple is minus 1. So we have discovered two eigenvalues here, 1 and negative 1, but 1 would, will count twice. And 1 will count twice because the dimension of the eigenspace was 2. Remember, any vector in the plane is, the, is an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue 1. And that's a two-dimensional space. And we could choose any two linearly independent vectors from that space to represent it. That's the tradition with eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Instead of saying it's this space, you just choose a basis from that space and say those are the two eigenvectors. And there's arbitrariness in that choice. Okay, and because there are two and it's two-dimensional and it's two all over the place, it counts twice. So you would say that the eigenvalues of this transformation are 1, 1, and negative 1. Just like a quadratic equation can have two roots that are the same. It will be actually a related fact, the roots of a polynomial with eigenvalues of a linear transformation. That multiplicity is similar, often similar, in its origin. And why do we do this? Why do we count eigenvalues like this? Well, there is a statement that's often true, that there are as many eigenvalues and as many linearly independent eigenvectors as the dimension of the space. 
Now it's not always true, as we saw in the case of rotations. And there will be another um, more interesting situation and more unusual situation called the defective case, when that statement is also not true. However, if we switch to linear algebra with complex numbers, that statement becomes true even more frequently. And with linear algebra with complex numbers, even the operation or transformation of rotation will have two eigenvalues. They will be complex. And the statement that there are as many eigenvalues as the dimension of the space will become true in that case. But in the case of reflection, counting the eigenvalue 1 twice allows us to say that in this case, yes, there are as many eigenvalues as the dimension of the space. All right, so it's a statement that's usually true. With complex numbers, it's almost always true, with the exception of one screwy case called the defective transformation or a defective transformation. So we'll get there when we get there. So this pretty much completes the discussion of, of reflection with respect to a plane. We've discovered eigenvalues and eigenvectors and what else is there to do? Well, other than perhaps to remark that reflection still satisfies the equation, that reflecting twice amounts to doing nothing at all. And once again, this may remind us of the algebraic equation x squared equals 1. And once again, we see that the roots are the same as the eigenvalues of the equation. So there's something there, and we'll discover what it is. Now let's talk about reflection with respect to a straight line. It will be a very similar kind of definition. So if this is the straight line that we'll consider, it's going through the origin. And for any vector, let me place it at the origin. All right, now I'm going to take it off the origin and bring it closer to the camera. The definition goes that you have to draw a straight line through the tip of the vector perpendicular to the straight line, to the line of reflection, and then continue to the other side. I wish I had another pen exactly like this one. I don't. And that's the image of that vector. So very similar transformation, except instead of saying draw a line perpendicular to the plane, you now say draw a line perpendicular to the line of the reflection. And that's still, geometrically speaking, a very well-defined line and just go to the other side. So this vector will go over here. This one that points slightly towards the camera will end up pointing slightly away from the camera. This one that's perpendicular to this line will flip and point the other way and so forth. And any vector on the line will remain on that line. So what are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this kind of reflection? Well, once again, one and negative one. And you can kind of see why. Anything along this line remains itself under this reflection. So those are the eigenvectors corresponding to the eigenvalue one. So now the eigenvalue one will have multiplicity one. And any vector that's orthogonal to this line will become minus itself. And that's this entire plane that's orthogonal to the line of the reflection. Any vector within that plane becomes, stays in that plane and just points in the opposite direction. So all of those eigenvectors correspond to the eigenvalue negative one. And so the eigenvalue negative one gets multiplicity two. So that's the two different, that's the difference between the two types of reflections. And this other reflection also satisfies this equation also inspires this algebraic equation, which once again has the same roots as the eigenvalues of the transformation. All right, so this completes our uh, reflection discussion. Let's move on to the projection, and you can kind of see what's similar and what's different from the two-dimensional case. Now with projection, you can once again project onto a plane, or you can project onto a straight line. So we'll just talk about projection onto the plane, and you can complete, uh, fill out the details for projection onto the straight line yourselves. It will be very similar. So the definition of projection onto the plane is similar. You draw a straight line through the tip of the vector, perpendicular to the plane, and then you stop right there, and that's the projection. So 
the projection of this vector is the zero vector. Uh, spoiler alert, that's one of the eigenvectors. All right, and all the vectors in the plane remain themselves just because if you draw a line perpendicular to the board, it's going to meet the board right there, and that will be the projection of this vector, so it remains itself. And I think the only difficult thing is to visualize this transformation the first time around. And once you have down the imagination part, I think analysis is relatively straightforward. All of the vectors in the plane are eigenvectors corresponding to the eigenvalue 1, and the vector perpendicular to the board, or it may point the other way, corresponds to the eigenvalue 0, because its projection is the 0 vector. So the situation is very similar to reflection, except the vector that used to flip now becomes 0. And the other change is that project, projecting a vector twice is the same as projecting it once. And this reminds us of this equation, which of course has roots 0 and 1, and voila, they're the same as the roots, as the eigenvalues of our linear transformation. Now, I think this completes the discussion of projection with respect to a plane. Now, projection with respect to a straight line. And of course, it's once again a similar sort of thing where to project a vector onto a line, you draw a line perpendicular to the line of projection. And wherever it meets that point, that's where the image of the vector is. So what are the eigenvalues? Excuse me, what are the eigenvectors? Well, anything along the line stays on the line, and anything perpendicular to the line in this entire plane becomes the zero vector. So once again, there's uh, an eigenvalue that equals 1, that has multiplicity 1, and the zero eigenvalue counts twice, so it has multiplicity 2. So the same difference from reflection as in the case of the plane. And once again, the projection satisfies this relationship, inspires this equation, which matches the roots once again. All right, so that's reflection and projection in three dimensions. And in both cases, we had exactly as many eigenvalues as the dimension of the space, and exactly as many corresponding eigenvectors. Now let's talk about rotation, which is an interesting case. In two dimensions, there were no eigenvalues if the angle was pi over 4. Unless the angle was special, there were no eigenvalues. What about in three dimensions? Well, how do you define a rotation in three dimensions? There are all sorts of ways in which you can rotate the space or rotate vectors or objects in space. You can pick up a rigid object and toss it arbitrarily, catch it in whatever configuration you catch it in. Well, that's rotation. That you can define that to be a rotation. Well, it turns out, and that will be one of the facts that we'll learn uh, in the course of our eigenvalue study, and it's a very vivid fact, that there is always one direction that remains unchanged. It's hard to imagine when this pen goes from this orientation to this orientation. It's hard to imagine that there is a bunch of points in the pen that actually did not move. So there's one direction. I'm not sure what it was for the rotation that I just demonstrated, but there's always one direction that remains unchanged. Well, that we'll learn a little bit later, but for now, let's just define a rotation the following way. I'll still use a pen, and it's defined the following way. Pick an axis of rotation, Pick an axis of rotation and then rotate with respect to that axis. So you can imagine that the vector is rigidly attached to the axis. So when the axis rotates, the vector rotates with it. And go into use the right hand rule to define a positive direction for the angle. So this would be a rotation by 45 degrees, and I'm about to rotate it by 90 degrees. So the vector will go from pointing towards the camera towards pointing exactly parallel to the camera. So that would be rotation by 90 degrees. So that's rotation in three dimensions. The axis can be chosen arbitrarily, 
but once the axis is chosen and the angle is specified, the whole transformation has been defined. So that's rotation. Now, what are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this transformation? Well, I'm about to reveal it, but there's only one. The only eigenvector is the vector that's parallel to the axis of rotation, because in the course of rotation, it will remain itself. So there will be one eigenvalue that equals one. It'll have multiplicity one, because there's only the dimension of the eigenspace associated with it as one, and that's the only one. Any other vector clearly changes the line along which it points. So that's the case where there's only one eigenvalue. So for this transformation, the statement that there are as many eigenvalues as there are eigenvectors is not true. Once we deal with complex numbers, it will once again be true. But now we have fewer eigenvalues than the dimension of the space. And that's rotation. And for the translation, there is not much I can do except define it and then say that it's nonlinear and leave it at that. But translation is, of course, defined the same way. You choose a constant vector, and to any vector, you add that vector. And wherever the tip of this vector is, that's the image of this vector. So the zero vector becomes this vector. The vector pointing straight out becomes this vector. Maybe that's well, not quite. Right? And that's because I chose a vector parallel to this plane. Well, it doesn't have to be parallel to that plane. It could be vector pointing in any direction whatsoever, but it's fixed for all vectors. So I'm just trying to make something out of nothing here. It's a boring transformation. It's a transformation that adds a constant vector to any other vector. And of course, it is nonlinear for the exact same reasons as we discussed in the plane. And so we're not even going to talk about its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So there you go. The transformations that were previously considered in the plane also find uh, legitimate analogs in space and are actually much more interesting in space. And we've just talked about them and discussed their eigenvalues and eigenvectors.